Okay, so this is the last last section in Chapter 9, Unit 9, which was a full full discussion of, of area and perimeter. Um, this is one that's maybe not going to be on the test directly. Um, everything you're doing on here, certainly you could do on the test, and you will have to do some aspect of it on the test. Um, but this is really a purpose more related to Algebra 2, pre-calculus, and calculus. We're going to talk about infinity a little bit, which is something we haven't really done a lot of in Algebra 1 or in geometry. Um, we're going to derive two formulas. By the end of this, you'll, you'll recognize those formulas. You go, oh yeah, I remember those. Now I know where they come from. And you've seen these formulas for years. So um, it's really just giving you the background of where they come from, sort of math history. Um, I'm not going to tell you what goes here yet. We'll come back in the, halfway through this and we'll fill this in. I'm not going to tell you what formula you're discovering right now. So leave that blank for right now. We'll just dive into this problem, and eventually you'll see what, that, what, that, what we're deriving here in a minute. So I want to find this yellow hexagon, and we're going to make the assumption it's a regular hexagon, find the area of it in terms of r, and by r I mean the radius of the hexagon, and you could also say it's the radius of the circle that's around the hexagon. So I want to find the area of a hexagon, and I'm intentionally drawing a second radius on here, as we've done quite a bit in this chapter. If you remember back to that, we did that so that we could find the area of the, of, the, uh, of the hexagon, and of course the area of a regular polygon is one-half apothem times the perimeter. So what I eventually want to do is I want to get this equation all in terms of r. It might be like one-half r squared times r cubed minus r to the second power. Something in terms of a and p are going to be in terms of r. So we're going to do a lot of algebra, maybe some trig, to rewrite these two in terms of the radius alone. So let's draw the apothem in as our next step. Oh. Take it back. We're going to get the central angle. As you remember, we did this a lot in this chapter. To get the central angle, take the 360 degrees at the middle here and divide it by the number of sides. So 360 over 6, of course, would be a 60 degree angle. Many of you are pretty good at that by now. Um, you know when you draw the apothem in, that cuts that 60 in half. So each of these are 30 degrees. And if you label the apothem, you can now get your first equation that relates the apothem to what we're trying to do, the radius, get, get it in terms of the radius of the circle. So if you just look at your trig ratios here, I'm get, A is adjacent to the 30, and the R is the hypotenuse. If you think adjacent over hypotenuse, that's a cosine ratio. So the cosine of 30 should be equal to the apothem divided by the radius for any, rex, any regular hexagon. And the ultimate goal here is to get rid of A and replace it with something in terms of R. So I want to solve this equation for A get A by itself here. If you multiply both sides by R, you get exactly that. You get the apothem is equal to R times the cosine of 30. So I can really go up here. I'm going to do this in a minute. I'm going to replace A and call it R cosine 30. I'm going to get this area in terms of only radius. I've got to do the same thing with the perimeter now. So the perimeter, of course, is the whole, all the side lengths. I'm going to just momentarily call this X, a little piece down there. And just think about this for a second. How many of these x values would get me all the way around the perimeter? Well, obviously, there'd be 2 here. So that'd be 2x. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 of them. The perimeter, in terms of this arbitrary x side length, is 12x. Same thing we did here. I want to do this in terms of some trig here in a minute. I want to get the value of x in terms of r. So I want to get a, an equation that relates x to r. And eventually, I'll plug that into the perimeter here. So if you look at these two sides, x is opposite of the 30, and of course r is your hypotenuse. So your opposite over hypotenuse ratio, as you all know, is sine. So the sine of 30 would be equal to opposite over hypotenuse, x over r. Same thing we did here to solve an equation, in other words, to clear the fraction. I'm going to multiply both sides by r. So the r's cancel out on the right side, you have just x left over, and you get r times sine of 30. You're now finally at a step. You can take this, this regular polygon equation and replace it with just r's, just in terms of the radius. So we already did this a minute ago. The apothem we said was r cosine 30. So I'm going to leave the 1 half in there. I'm going to replace a with r cosine 30. Substitute that value in there. The perimeter, we just did this here, was 12 times whatever this little piece is here. It's 12 times all this garbage here, times 12 times r times sine 30. That's sort of the messy version of it. Do a tiny bit of algebra to clean that up. Um, you can, and this is all multiplication all the way across here. These are all multiplication steps. 
1 half times 12, of course, is 6. And you'll notice you've got an r factor here and another r factor. r times r, as you all know, is r squared. So this is a slightly cleaner version on the right-hand side there. 6 came from 1 half of 12, r squared. You can't do anything with this other, right now other than punch it in your calculator, turn it into decimals, you know, take this decimal, and multiply by this decimal, and then multiply that by 6. You know, you might want to pause it right now, quickly crunch some numbers in your calculator, and you should get some sort of small decimal value, not a very big value. It's between 2 and 3. I believe it's around 2.59. And of course, we still have the R that we can't do anything with, but this is our goal, to come up with a little equation in terms of R. So the area of any regular hexagon, this is any regular hexagon, is whatever this R value is, squared times 2.59. Again, you have no idea why you're doing this right now. By the time you get to the end of the next one, you'll get it. So just slide down on your paper. I've got a new polygon in the middle of your paper with more sides. Okay? I'll pause it here and go on to the second section so I don't lose this.